One girlfriend, he goes to her house, she argues with him all the time about where he's been. The other one, he goes to her house, she's so happy that he's there that she cooks for him, massages him. Where do you think he's gonna spend most of his time? The second girlfriend. Duh, but I'd rather be involved where people love me. My idol wouldn't go to the Vietnam War. That was Muhammad Ali, because he said the Vietnam people had did nothing to him. If uh, Habib Mayweather fight materializes at some point. I feel like if I trained him, I probably could make him really go in there and be competitive. We should, we should, we should actually get this to him. <laughs> Habib, come on, think about it. Masjid Al, the one of the biggest stars right now, he said he would love the prospect of fighting Canelo. Canelo gonna take him apart. My shit will keep your head spinning like a sitting fan. I'm never mad, I kick your ass while I'm chilling, man. A short fuse, so you know I'm born to spoil quick. And while I'm whooping <laughs> on your ass, I'ma talk shit. So you haven't stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Tough shit. Здравствуйте, дорогие друзья. Сегодня я опять на Урале. Многие из вас знают, что когда я приезжаю на Урал, это касается либо бокса, либо смешных единоборств. И вновь я в любимейшей академии РМК здесь, в Екатеринбурге. Сегодня здесь пройдет э, довольно прикольный боксерский турнир. Ну вот, кажется, да, боксерский турнир, ну, что-то особенного. А этот очень особенный, потому что его проводит просто легендище, легендище бокса. Просто человек, у которого, которого ну, просто он абсолютно уникальный, он очень крутой, он не только... Боксер, он еще и рэпер. Но вы, конечно, знаете, о ком я говорю. Зовут его Рой Джонс Младший. И он россиянин. Так что сейчас ходим на турнир и пообщаемся с самим Роем. Поехали. Одна из главных прикольных особенностей именно этого турнира, что он транслирует через платформу UFC в Америку. То есть там сейчас на восточном побережье утро. Ну что, прикольно проснуться в субботу утром, заценить боксерский турнир из Екатеринбурга, где уже, естественно, поздний вечер. И вот эти два совершенно колоритных типана, они, собственно говоря, комментируют для UFC на Америку. Их зовут Шон и ну как еще начать э, трансляцию турнира, который организовывает Рой Джонс, и используя его замечательный и известнейший рэп-трэп «Can be touched». Конечно, он будет на этом ринге сам выступать. Вот я смотрю на карт, ну, конечно, больших супер-мега-звездных имен здесь нет, но представьте, вот эти все парни, которые только в самом начале своего пути практически находятся, у некоторых там по два, по три боя всего, вот они сегодня практически историю вершат, потому что их будут транслировать в Америку. А главные два боя, Соответственно, здесь будет титульный бой WBA Asia между Мухаммадом Шеховым и Аароном Хуаресом из Никарагуа. А самый главный бой, о котором говорили наши американские коллеги и друзья, Алексей Горов против Сергея Раченко. Битва практически России против Украины. 9-0-0 у Алексея и 7-4-0 с двумя нокаутами у Сергея Раченко. Интересная будет заруба. Идеальный боксер, идеальный рейтинг. Даже девчонки танцуются просто идеально. Вообще, он идеальный человек. Пояс, на пояс WBA просто месилово жесточайшее. На самом деле мой любимый практически бокс, потому что это очень-очень легкий вес. Это до 55 килограмм, и они летают как модельки просто. Просто жесточайшее месилово. Парень 
который сейчас как раз нападает активно, он местный, поэтому за него тут, естественно, только все пытаются надрать а, все, что можно надрать человеку из Никарагуа. Your winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated WBA South Asia Super Bantamweight Champion Ну что, местный парень, которого все называли мухой, болели за него Мухаммад, победил и понял за собой титул, понял за собой пояс WBA Asia, ну а сейчас главный... Да, выбор песни для выхода на ринг. Тина Тернер, всем привет, Бест. Всем привет, Бест. Смотрим. Ну что, все, бой закончен, в этот раз без нокаутов. Сейчас судя будет решать, как победил. Хорошая была, хорошая миссия была. Коллеги, Волгари, Килорин Арми Гривен, скоро на сейм, 102-89. Ну что, десятая юбилейная победа для Алексея Егорова. В этот раз без нокаута. Но, тем не менее, десятка есть, непобежденный. Вот американские коллеги все время говорят в комментарии, что он скоро пойдет в пояс. Он не узнает, собирается он за пояс. Алексей, поздравляю вас с победой. Юбилейная десятая победа получается. Американские коллеги, комментаторы, всю дорогу просто говорили про вас, что вы через пару лет... Пойдете за поясом. Пойдете за поясом? Я думаю, что в, этом году, в будущем году я буду чемпионом. Я надеюсь на это. То есть уже прям совсем ближайшем будущем? Да. А... Ну, а сколько можно уже? Три, три года в персоналах надо уже пояс забирать. Сегодня, сегодняшний бой, в, вот если сравнивать с предыдущими, сложнее, проще? А, бой, а, он непростой бой, скажу, но и не, и не архисложный. В принципе, понятно, я чувствовал, видел, э, все у меня, в принципе, получалось, по большому счету. Э, Сергей очень опытный, очень стойкий соперник, и он мне дал хороший опыт. Это огромный опыт, и спасибо ему большое за этот бой. Последний вопрос. Вот сегодняшний весь турнир транслировался на Америку. Люди проснулись в субботу утром смотреть бокс. Я думаю, что они его смотрели в любом случае. 
вот факт того, что вы выступали перед огромной американской аудиторией, и плюс еще сверху сидел легенда, живая легенда мирового бокса. Как докладывал немножко давление на вас? <coughs> ну, я думаю, что я не в том возрасте, чтобы меня, на меня это накладывало давление. На меня давление накладывают другие вещи в жизни, поэтому это приятный бонус ко всему этому шоу, ко всему, к моей карьере, что за рубеж... я... меня покажут зарубежному зрителю, зарубежному... меня поют зарубежные фанаты. Это здорово, это приятный бонус. По-моему, очень, очень хороший, крепкий такой главный бой вечера, ну а сейчас за самым вкусным десертом. Надо пойти пообщаться с Роем Джонсом младшим. Roy, thank you so much for joining us. It's a big honor and pleasure to be talking to you in this wonderful city, right on the very far end of Europe. It's not the first boxing fight night, but it's the first one on UFC fight pass that's being broadcasted around the world, mainly back in the United States, but around the world, so. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a good morning, like you wake up on a Saturday and you have a boxing exactly. event to watch. Some good fighters, some guys who have potential to go on to the next level. So we're trying to find guys that we can start showing and letting the world see the talent that Russia has as well, so that they can start being recognized at, on the mainstream and being placed in better positions to be able to get themselves world title shots. Do these guys even realize, those Russian boxers, I mean, they're not stars, obviously, right? No. Do they even realize that they will be broadcasted around the world through the UFC platform? Yes, they do realize that's why they want to be on board, because they realize that this is an opportunity of a lifetime. They have no other way of being broadcast worldwide. This is their opportunity. So they must take advantage of this opportunity if they really want it. The UFC thing happened because I have a deal with UFC in Russia and in America to broadcast boxing because the UFC actually signed a deal with ESPN. So they are not allowed to show live box, I mean live UFC fights on UFC fight pass anymore. I therefore transfer some of that to the company here in Russia as well, because it's worldwide. So because they can't show live UFC fights on UFC Fight Pass no more, HBO went out of business with boxing. Why not move boxing to UFC Fight Pass? Wow. And that's what I did. So it had nothing to really do with the UFC guys. It was more of a deal that happened with me having a deal with a relationship with Dana White, mm -hmm. then us doing a deal with UFC Fight Pass for boxing. Then we brought the boxing part to RCC. But of all the venues that you could have chosen for this kind of event, why is it the RCC Academy here in Ekaterinburg? Because the RCC Academy is doing so many good things in boxing, so many big things. Not only boxing, they do mixed martial arts, they do all kind of uh, combat sports. So with them being such a big company and trying to do the right thing in Russia and buy their fighters, they want to get their fighters more worldwide recognition as well. I want to help Russia become more rec recognized and help the, help the pro fighters get opportunities that they never had before because pro boxing is young in Russia. So with that being both of our dreams, we figured if we come together, it makes it work for both of us. So we came together on this first one and so far it looks like it's working very good for both of us. Could you tell us more, a little bit more about, um, you know, the projects that you've been doing in Russia? Because back in 2015 when you were asking the man himself about the citizenship, you specifically said that, you know, the citizenship in Russia would allow you to, to do business easily. So how has it progressed since then? Well, you see, I got a UFC fight pass date here now in Russia, so it wasn't like I was lying. Having citizenship makes it easier because I can come over now and work things that I can tie back into the United States and the rest of the world. So I also, I'm also doing some, some um, social projects with the kids. I have done three so far, had 100 kids in two different places in Siberia. Had 101 places, had 100 in another place, Irkutsk. Then I uh, had 100 come to Moscow the other day. And we have to pick 10 out of that 100. So I've gotten 30 kids so far that have made my, my cut. And um, we're trying to take these kids and develop them and start looking for the futures of tomorrow as well. Not just stop it today, but tomorrow too. So I'm trying to do what I can to give my part back to Russia from what I've learned through my years in the ring and out of the ring. My experiences, I want to try to pass that back to the Russian fighters because the president was nice enough to let me become a citizen. So as my appreciation, I want to give back as much as I possibly can give back to the Russian society. How did it come to you that, you know, you want to do this kind of stuff in Russia? Because I've, I've seen the stuff that you're doing with kids. 
it has to be something in your life that you know puts you toward this kind of decision like boom I want to work with Russia I'm the kind of person that give you the old lady scenario as a kid they always tell you you shouldn't want a girl that does not want you you should want the girl that's crazy about you that's the girl you should go with. not the beautiful girl not the girl who everybody else wants no find the one that's crazy about you that's the one you want so when I I think when a kid told me back in 2011, I think, that Russian, that the Russian citizens loved me to death, I had no clue. When I came, I found everything he told me to be exactly like he said. I don't want to necessarily be where people like me. I'm cool with that, but I'd rather be involved where people love me. You understand me? Yeah, of course. In, in the United States, people love me too, don't get it wrong, but in boxing, they have so many people that once you come, when you go, they kind of move on to the next. And Russia is not like that. They remember what you are. They remember who you are. They remember what you meant to them. So I had some say, y'all must have forgot. In the USA, they must have forgot. But in Russia, they don't forget. So when you have people that consistently show you love like that, so much that they're willing to make you a citizen because of their appreciation of what God blessed you with and what you've done over your, le over your years, it's very difficult for me not to incorporate myself in that society. It's very different, difficult for me not to give back of myself to that society that loves me. It's a very valid point. You know, I actually can vouch for that because I was standing behind you in um, the airport yesterday on the same flight, mm -hmm. and there were two guys literally behind me. It was like, look, this is the boxer guy. Oh, he's actually going to Ekaterinburg, he's going to have a boxing night. Yeah. But I'll tell you another story, actually. When you got the citizenship, officially, and it became a big news, I was actually living in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I was somewhere down south, I think it was Louisiana. So I was sitting in a bar, and there was like this one old chap reading a newspaper, and he sees that Roy Jones is now a Russian citizen. And he just starts swearing around the bar, saying like, What's wrong with our government? They let a guy like Ro Joins defect to the Russians. <laughs> did you get this kind of stick back home for that? Yeah, yeah, you did. You get this kind of the stick too, but it's like, I didn't denounce no citizenship. It's, there are plenty of Russians who have Russian and American citizenship as well. So because I'm a worldwide known figure, it's a problem if I do it, but it's okay for them to do it. It's okay for some Americans to have dual citizenship, but is it wrong for me because I'm known? But these Russian people love me. These Russian people appreciate me. We love and appreciate one another. So I hear you, but I don't hear you because God made us all. And in reality, we're all brothers and sisters. In reality, we're all supposed to be connected. In reality, we're all supposed to love one another. So if they love me and they showing me that they love me, of course I want to go where I'm shown love at. If you have a man who has two girlfriends. One girlfriend, he goes to a house, she argues with him all the time about where he's been. The other one, he goes to a house, she's so happy that he's there that she cooks for him, massages him, take care of him. Where do you think he's gonna spend most of his time? The second girlfriend. Duh. <laughs> it's a so, simple choice, right? So it's not hard, I mean, not that you don't like him, not that you don't love him, but you wanna spend your time where you feel most appreciated. But that pressure didn't really get to you. I mean, the times when you got the citizenship, it was sort of a pre-Trump thing in America, a lot of boiling hate towards the Russians. How did you cope with that? Because I lived there and it was hard for me to cope with that. Yeah, but you gotta remember now, my idol wouldn't go to the Vietnam War. That was Muhammad Ali. Because he said the Vietnam people had did nothing to him. So why should he go kidding them and they ain't did nothing to him? So it makes sense. So he stood for something. So that's who I learned what I want to be from a guy who stood for something. So it's like, these Russian people love me. I'm gonna hate them because y'all say y'all don't like them or because y'all say what they did. Until they show me that, what reason do I have to hate them? And I haven't seen that yet. So it's like, we blame the Russians for everything. You know what I'm saying? If you listen to the politics, they blame the Russians for everything. But why, I, I never seen any of that. I mean, when I fought Russians in competitions, they just would fight us like I would. They fought, they beat some, some beat me. It was handshake, thank you, congratulations, and we moved on. No different than fighting any other country. So if they haven't shown me that side, then should I sit back and listen to what you guys say they did, 
or should I go by what I see? I'm a person that I like to go by what I see. There's one topic that I wanted to avoid, but it's, it looks to be unavoidable. You know, you are now living and working in Russia lots of the times, not most of the time, but um, we are at the brink of a potential catastrophe. Russia could be banned from international competitions, although I don't think it will happen. But anyway, if, you know, Russia is slapped with bans and, and pro you know, prohibited from, from different competitions, do you think it is a catastrophe for the sports here? Because you've been working in this system and you know how it is. Of course it's a catastrophe uh, for the sports. You've taken away dreams of kids, some of these kids who had nothing to do with it. You know, it's like the IOC. They robbed me of a gold medal in 1988, 19 years old. Because they never went back and fixed that, and so many people around the world saw that, the integrity of boxing in the Olympics has, de has decreased. Because if you can rob a guy, nobody cares, and you don't do nothing to fix it. You know it's wrong, but you don't care to fix it. And it's the finals. We're not talking about semifinals. We're not talking about quarterfinals. We're not talking about prelims. We're talking about the finals. That truly determines a gold and silver history. We didn't say go take the gold medal back from the guy, but you know I deserved it. So why not give me a gold medal too and say, okay, we got two gold, two gold medals this year. They gave it to him, so we're not going to take his. But it was wrong, so we're going to give him one too because he deserved it. Now the integrity, at least people say, okay, at least they're fixing the problem. What happens is if you ban a sport or ban everybody for one or two sports doing wrong, that's not fair to them people because some athletes, just drugs don't matter. It's not even a factor in their sport. So why would you ban those sports when they had nothing to do with it? If you're going to slap them, slap the hand of the guilty, the direct sport that it had something to do with. Don't slap the ones that uh, ruin the kids' life that have dreams like I did since they was 18 years old to go to the Olympics or to go to the World Cup or go whatever and compete for their country for the love of their sport, for the love of their country and try to be number one to prove that their country is one of the best. Don't punish them. But when you do that, if you ban everybody, you're killing a lot of dreams. And we always talk about the youth or our mission because that is tomorrow. Well, when you ban the whole country from participating, you're killing a whole lot of youth. So for you to tell me you really care about the youth, now I have a contradiction. I can't really believe that. Because there are some of these kids that their sports don't require steroids. Has nothing to do with steroids. If they had steroids, it wouldn't matter. Has nothing to do with it. It's not even an issue in some of the sports. Figure skating, this, steroids not an issue. <laughs> you understand me? So it's like, why would you ban those sports too? because something maybe one or two other sports did. It's just not fair. Speaking of the, the, the Olympic final, you were, you were talking about how your dreams as a, as a young kid were effectively ruined at that final. Even the fighter you fought with admitted at the fight that, you know, why are they doing this to you? He admitted that you were better than him. Did that make you a different fighter? Did that make you a different human being, you know, being faced with such a great injustice? But then you went on and won just about everything you could possibly think of in boxing? To be honest, I'm not going to say maybe a different human being really, but it probably did have a very big bearing on my professional career because after I was robbed, and I think it was God's way, which God knows best all the time, it was God will, God's way of motivating me to go be the best professional that I could be because they gave me the Val Barker Cup, which meant that I was the best amateur, but I still don't have a gold medal. How you give me the best amateur fight in the tournament, but you don't give me a gold medal? It's contradictory. So, that being said, when I turned pro, which I wasn't going to turn pro, so it could have ruined my whole career. I wouldn't be here now had I not turned pro. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, it affected my life, but it made me just steal my P's and Q's as a professional. It made me be a little bit more sharper mentally as a professional than I probably would have been. Because I had a lot of friends that would lose like their 12th or 13th fight because they thought everything was going so good and easy for them. Then they have a lack night, a lackluster night, and they lose. That wasn't going to happen to me because I was still pissed off from losing the gold medal fight that I knew I won in Seoul. So definitely wasn't going to stop me because of that. So that kind of helped me, but it still stuck with me because since I was a kid, since I watched the 1976 Olympics at seven years old, I wanted to go to the Olympics. The reason I'm asking you about, you know, about Seoul um, is because I want to see what kind of future those children might have. It's going to be horrible. It's going to be horrible because you're going to kill a lot of dreams. 
Now, we don't know how long it's going to last for, but you're going to kill a lot of dreams. So, I'm, see, in, in, in our country, uh, in the USA, when I started, it was like high school. You did, you did your time as an amateur. When you got open, you got your four-year window. And that's every four years, it's an Olympics. So we got an 84 class, we had an 88 class, we got a 92 class, we got a 96 class. Everybody went for the Olympic. When, that, when the Olympics was over, if you made it, you turned pro. If you missed it, you still turned pro, because that was your chance. <laughs> so it's like Mike Tyson came out in the class of 84. He didn't make the Olympics, no. Now he came back as a pro and beat up all the guys that did make the Olympics. Tyrell Biggs, uh, Henry Tillman, those were the heavy and super heavyweights which would have been the division he would have competed in. As a professional, all his heavyweight, he turned professional and beat both of them. But he missed his opportunity as the Olympics because he couldn't outscore them because he was a more of a pro-based fighter. He wasn't really geared to make the Olympic team. He was more geared for a professional career. Those guys were geared to make the Olympic team, and they made it. And that was the highlight of their lives, highlight of their careers. Because as a professional, he made it. That was, he ruined their careers as a professional because he turned pro and became a better pro than they ever thought about being. But the highlight of their career was the Olympics. Take that away from what they got. And that's what I'm saying. That's what's, that's what's kidding me about this decision. You're taking that away from a lot of kids. Because a lot of kids may can make the Olympics, but they may not be able to develop as pros, like Henry Tillman, like Tyrell Biggs. They didn't develop as pros. They were good or amateurs, and they made the pinnacle of amateur boxing. And they got a name because they made the Olympics but there's a few more looming problems with that even because right now we're battling with they're trying to group amateur and pro boxing together already and that's really not a good mix. So we, we're battling that first. Uh, if the ban comes, it's gonna make it worse because you have to keep amateur boxing and pro boxing separate. If you don't, it's gonna be another catastrophe. Um, in the United States, there was one last month. They had a world tournament here in Russia and the American heavyweight was knocked out, amateur heavyweight, was knocked out by a professional boxer who has six no record with six knockouts already. Why were they in the ring together? In the rest of the world, you can't do that. So it's like, you have to be careful of what you do, and that isolation, if it's not done properly, it can hurt worse, because pros and amateurs don't deserve to be in the same ring together, not on competition night. Now they can work together in the gym, they can spar together, but not on competition night. The amateur, the amateur kid from America, from America, should never have been able to fight the professional kid from Russia because that's two different animals. Mm -hmm. One fights for sport, one fights to feed his family. Who you think got the upper hand? <laughs> it's an interesting point. I mean, they both have <laughs> strong motivation, but the, the that one fight to feed his family got way more motivation yeah. than that one fighting for sport. Now, yeah. sure. come on. What do you think about the modern day boxing it, as it is? Because I can't call it anything else but freak fights, mm -hmm. like Mayweather against McGregor. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know we've had, we've had a freak fight in Russia just this last weekend. I saw it. Uh, a power lifter got knocked out in 45 seconds into the first, uh, first uh, round. Uh, do you think it's spoiling the sport as it is? That's not spoiling the sport. What's spoiling the sport is that we have so many promoters now and these promoters sometimes are having hard times working together. You understand? Russia hasn't felt that effect bad yet because they don't, they're just still young on the professional scene. So they don't have that problem necessarily just yet, but they'll fit it down the road if they have let their fighters go sign with those promoters. The freak fights are different because nowadays everybody's into the fast life. You know, nowadays there are people that are famous via social media only. Never done nothing serious to become famous. They're more famous than some of the professional athletes. It's people that know some of these uh, social media kids better than they know professional athletes, world champion professional athletes. But I mean, would you watch a fight like that? I mean, I'm not talking about Mayweather so, McGregor. Certain ones I would watch, but certain ones I wouldn't watch. Like I wouldn't watch the one with the, with the guy fighting the power lifter because I know a power lifter, he ain't fought nobody. It's like they say, sometimes, a black belt get punched in the face, he become a green belt because he never had to get punched in the face. So it's like, it's different. A power lifter never got punched in the face, he get punched in the face, he gonna see something different. So I probably wouldn't have watched that one, but McGregor Mayweather, I would have watched it because McGregor know how it is to get hit in the face. 
I know he wasn't good enough to hit Floyd in the face, but I know he knew how it feels. So I just want to see how long he was going to try. You th did, did you think he did well? He did well because he tried. He lasted 10 rounds, which I didn't think he would do. Um, he did. He lasted a lot longer than I expected him to. And uh, he, he did very well as far as what was expected of him, if you know boxing. But you knew he didn't have a chance coming in. But what bothers me is that in the state of Nevada, sometimes the commission, the commissioner, I've had guys, I had two guys not long ago. One guy was 14 and one, the other guy was like 13 and two. He made them fight six rounds. Said they weren't capable of going 10 rounds. They got 15 amateur, I mean, pro fights a piece. But you put Conor McGregor in who has no pro fights and you let him go 12 rounds with a guy that's 49 and 0. That's the problem boxing has. We got people that messing up everything because they're miscalculating or because of the situation, they're not letting certain things happen. So you let this guy do this, but you won't let these two guys who really fighting for their life. They're not making money these two gonna make, no. But these guys need it more than them two do. Them two have names in their respective sports already. They're establishing their respective sports. This 13 and one guy, and, I mean 14 and one guy and this 13 and two guy, they trying to make it. And you won't even let them fight but six rounds. What? You understand? So things like that are what is hurting boxing. Um, the freak fights are because sometimes you can get over freak, uh, cross over and get a freak fight and you get people more interested in it because of the social media days. Social media hypes things up quick. It's social media guys that are fighting amateur fights that are making more money than guys that are good professional fighters. The, the gas side, Logan Paul. Is like that. It's happening. It's not fair, but it's happening. But what do you think about, you know, the fact that it's happening? You can't think nothing about it. You can't hate on them for being able to learn how to use social media and make that kind of money. You just feel sorry for the real fighters that they don't, that they are not fortunate enough to be appreciated or accepted like that. I know you're a, you're a big fan of Habib, mm -hmm. but you also once said that not a single MMA fighter would beat you in the ring. Boxing, no. Yeah, in boxing, I mean, of course. Um, I mean, it's quite obviously why you say that. But do you think MMA fighters, the mixed martial arts fighters, um, have a chance against boxers in the Of course ring? they do. Of course they do, because if you find a guy that can punch for real, like Khabib, Khabib can punch. If Khabib hits you right, he'll knock you out if he can catch you right. Now, he ain't uh, just a solid, straight up, like all day boxing, but he got good boxing skills. And he can punch, so he's a little bit different. McGregor, to me, is a good boxer, but he's not necessarily a puncher. Khabib is a puncher. So anybody that can punch has a chance. MMA guys that can box a little bit and can punch, they have a chance. MMA guys who can box but don't have a real punch, they're not going to beat boxers because they don't box full time. So hypothetically, if uh, Habib Mayweather fight materializes at some point, I know it's all speculation, but you know there's been a lot of talk about that. Do you think he actually stands a chance against Floyd? Depends. If he gets trained right, yeah. If you don't get trained right, no. But if you get trained right, yeah. I feel like if I trained him, I probably could make him really go in there and be competitive. You feel me? Because I know what to look for, what not to look for. I'm a, that's what I do. I'm a guru at boxing only. Can't tell him nothing about the MMA. But boxing, I can tell him everything about. So if I trained a guy like that and he has the heart, and I know he got the heart because I've seen him already. And I know he got the punch because I've seen him already. We could make it very interesting because of the fact that I know what it takes to beat most styles. Roy, is that an official offer on the table for No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if somebody like, if a man Stewart was alive and a man Stewart trained him, he'd have a good chance. There are some other trainers that, that probably could train him to do the same thing. Maybe some trainers even in Russia that could do the same thing. I'm just saying that if the right trainer got him, because he can punch and he got a good boxing base already, he could be competitive. But you'd love to, to coach him. Why not? I don't know, on a fight that big, why not? Why not? We should, we, should, we should actually get this to him. <laughs> Habib, come on, think about it. He man. knows, he knows. <laughs> he know, oh, he knows, okay. There's another sort of MMA boxing related story going on. Uh, Masvidal, the, one of the biggest stars right now. I mean, when he took out Askren, was, he made him quite famous immediately. Uh, he said he would love the prospect of fighting Canelo. Uh, do you think that could be a good fight? No, Canelo gonna take him apart. Canelo is not the one you wanna mess with right now. Canelo is a little bit different than I mean, whether anybody else, Canelo is a whole different animal. When you go in with Canelo, you better have your mind right, because Canelo coming to get it. Um, 
Triple G said Canelo ran from the first fight. So what did Canelo do? Chase him the second fight. <laughs> you hear me? Yeah. Canelo ain't, that, ain't he is not the one to play with. So no, I don't think he have a chance with Canelo. It ain't many boxers that have a chance with Canelo right now. So let alone an uh, MMA guy. And I commend him for wanting to take the fight. And I'm sure we'll pay to see it because they both have huge fan bases in two separate arenas. Mm -hmm. So that when you bring them two fan bases together, that's a great night, a great sporting event. So yes, I would love to see the fight. Yes. I love to see how what he does and how much he takes and how long it takes Canelo possibly to get him out. But I don't necessarily see him being Canelo, no. Uh, in the Roy Jones list of best pound for pound fighters in the world right now, where does Canelo stand? I got three of them. My vote for skill for skill would be Vasil Lomachenko, mm -hmm. but we haven't really seen him take the best punch. My vote for proven commodity and with some of the best would be Terrence Crawford. But yet, we still haven't seen him fight at Earl Spence. Mm -hmm. So my vote for one that just did it and then fought them all and still conquered and got to the top would be Canelo. If Lomachenko beats Tank Davis, then he may get back to the top because he beat all the good fighters in his weight class too. But he's been down. And we haven't seen him with a puncher like Tank Davis. And he's been down. So <clears throat> if he can nullify Tank Davis, then I may put him back up number one. And it's still, like I say, any of those three guys can be number one or anything. I can say Canelo number one, I can say Crawford number one, or I can say Vasil Lomachenko number one. All three of them I can give number one for different reasons. Wilder is not anywhere close to that, right? He's not there yet. Um, he's getting close, but he's not there yet because he had a draw with Fury. And um, he did drop Fury twice, but he had a draw with Fury. We've seen him struggle with Ortiz. He did knock him out, though. He knocked him out the second time. He's knocked him out the first time too, but we seen him struggle the first time. And the second time, Ortiz outboxed him, but he played a smart, he was very smart. He showed maturity in the second fight. So he's getting there, yet I haven't seen him do enough to really put him in that pound for pound list. I mean, there's definitely most popular and pound for pound. See, when I say pound for pound, I'm talking about guys that can do it all. Crawford can beat you left-handed, Crawford can beat you right-handed, Crawford can knock you out with the left or right hand, Crawford can knock you out going forward or going back, Crawford can knock you out going left or going right. So can Canelo, so can um, Lomachenko. Can Wilder? We don't know. We ain't seen it. So it's like, when you say pound for pound, I'm not one of the people that give it to them because of how popular they are. Now you say who the best punch in the league right now, or in the, in the, in the game right now, I'm gonna tell you, and Deontay Wilder. And can't nobody put, don't nobody punch on the water right now. He is the best puncher by far. But that does not translate into the best pound for pound boxer. Mm -hmm. Pound for pound, you can do it all. The second fight that they are looking to have, I think, in February 2020 next year, which is in about two months from now, actually. It seems like long ago, long ago but lo long away. But uh, do you think it's going to be a, a, a cracking bout, or is it going to be another bore fest? Because the first one was really boring. The first Fury to fight? Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of boring. And if it lets Fury make it boring again this time, then he still won't raise, won't rise in the higher in my pound for pound chart. If he goes out out box Fury and take him out like he wants to, then he'll go very close to the top. But Fury was better in the first fight. Of course he was. Of course he was. Fury is a good boxer. Fury is a smart boxer. That's why I said I can't put Deontay on my pound for pound top five yet because Fury outsmarted you and lasted. You gotta remember, you you the best punch in the game. Steve Cunningham also dropped Fury, and Steve Cunningham was a cruiserweight, not known for his punching power. Right, but if you were, let's say, hypothetically, to put money on either of the boxes, the Fury or Wilder, in the upcoming fight, mm -hmm. who would you put the money on? Probably put my money on Wilder because of the weight that Fury has lost. Uh, I don't know how well it's going to allow him to be able to take that punch now. Um, I like Fury as far as the boxing skills went when he was bigger because I know that he could take the punch better. And he still dropped, dropped him twice, but he got up. The extra weight, I think, helped him a little bit. Now, this time without the extra weight, I'm a little scared because the biggest problem he has is taking Wilder's punch. He can outthink Wilder, and I think he's probably a better boxer than Wilder, but that's not where you got to beat Wilder at, the punch you got to deal with. So if you lose weight and lose mass, I don't know. It scares me all the time because I know what happened when I took all that mass off. So if he can get past that, then he'll probably beat him again because he's definitely a better boxer than a smarter guy when it comes to boxing. I have one last boxing related question and it's a very hypothetical question. If you could hop into a time machine and go back to your peak years, mm -hmm. say 20 years ago, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. and get a fight with any boxer in history, I'm saying even like maybe 1920s. I'll fight Shuri Robinson. 
Why not Rocky Marciano, for instance? Because Sugar Ray Robinson was the closest thing I've seen pound for pound as far as all the skills, all the attributes, hand speed, power, explosiveness, up and down the weight, closest I've seen to myself. So I want to fight the best. Um, Marciano was good, but you know how his record goes. You know, I mean, he got cousins on his record. You know what I'm saying? I, it's hard to say that. You know, I understand he had an undefeated record, but undefeated record don't necessarily mean nothing because we never seen you go through nothing. You feel me? We've seen Robinson go through stuff. We've seen Robinson go through rounds and rounds and rounds with the Raging Bull who would never stop coming. We know what Robinson was. It's not a question of what, was he what we think he was. We know he was. So boxing-wise, he was basically your idol? Yeah, well, basically, yes, as far as skills go, yes. He, he him, and Salvador Sanchez. Mm. Oh, Sanchez was amazing. What? 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 As far as boxing skills and the range, they're my, they're my favorite two all the time. They're my favorite two all the time. As far as personality, along with the boxing, I'm going to leave by far. I've been with hip hop since I was a small child, mm -hmm. and I know your music very well. Mm -hmm. Why have you stopped? I haven't stopped. I got one that I did a little while ago called If You Want to Come and Get It, Man. You know, this right here, I'm always with it, man. My shit will keep your head spinning like a cinema fan. I'm never mad. I kick your ass while I'm chilling, man. A short fuse, so you know I'm born to spark quick. And while I'm whooping <laughs> on your ass, I'm going to talk shit. That's just me. I got to do what I got to do. I promise you an ass whooping. I can't lie to you. My last fight, I had to lose 25 pounds. I still broke him off uh, 25 rounds. With one hand, I got at least 25 styles. I'm more deadly than a country full of mad cows. They better stop me. Niggas can't see the RJ. Don't put me in your VCR, because I don't play. A lot of people say they game, but they won't stay. Scratch time to cross the line. My niggas walk away. That ain't nothing if you want to come get it. Yeah. So you haven't stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Tough shit. I ain't stopped. What I meant by uh, stopping, meaning that your last full album was so many years ago. Well, yeah, wh wh when can we expect a new one? Uh, 2020, a new one will be on the board. Trust me. Are you coming out in 2020? Yes, sir. 2020 will be back. I'll be right back at it. Okay. Can you promote it to me? What? What? By what here, Bang Up Volume 2. Mm -hmm. Um, I got Juvenile on there. Juvenile. Juvenile. Back that ass up. Man, SM Bullet. That's my new body head banger. Um, Marvin Bagley III, the basketball player. Mm -hmm. He's on there. Um, should have a few more people on. And right now, everything is going good. I'm enjoying it. I got a couple of them that I like. Got one that's called uh, I Do It Big for my man, Mr. Magic, who passed. That's one of my favorites. Then I got another body head anthem. But it don't go. Volume two. Yeah, volume two, yeah. So it's kind of hot. It's going to be hot. I, I love it. I'm loving it so far. So I'm thinking, you, you'll see. I got another Y'all Must Have Forgot. That's why I got Marvin Beck on that new Y'all Must Have Forgot. But uh, it, it's pretty cool. Wh 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 who was your inspiration? Scarface. Scarface. My favorite artist of all time. And people say, why would he be your favorite? People say, why would he be your favorite? Because the things he rapped about, I could relate to him. I don't believe in. Like, that's why I don't, I don't rap about drugs and stuff because I never did all that. I don't rap about gangs, I never did all that. I rap about what I've done. If you're rapping about something, rap about something that's true to you. Do you, do your lane, then I can believe you, I can ride with you. If it ain't your lane, don't give me that because you're talking about something that you really don't do. He talked about what he did. And most of what he did, I can relate to. You understand? Not the drug game, but the other stuff he went through, I can relate to. And he always has a religious song on his album. And people don't know that. But every album he put out, he's going to have a religious rap song on there. People don't know it, and sometimes they don't understand it because the way he say it, but it's a religious rap song in every album he put out. I really liked him when he was part of the Rough Riders. No, he was. That was, that was DMX. He was no, no, I mean, he was doing something. He might do a song with them. But in the traditional East Coast, West Coast, which, which side of the barricade you were on? I don't really know. I mean, I think I probably more East Coast. But um, I love Snoop. I uh, love Dre. I love Cube. I, mean, I love both. So it's like hard to say, but... On the, on the mass, I think it probably was more East Coast rappers that I like than I like West Coast rappers. Five, four, five West Coast that I like, but it's probably 10 or 12 East Coast that I like. So East Coast would have won over because of how many more, like they had the Nas, they had Jigga, they had uh, Mob Deep, they had Bigger, they had so many different ones. I mean, from the Jam Master J days to, I mean, UTFO, they had so many. Plus it was born there. That's what I'm saying. So how can you say West Coast better than East Coast when East Coast is what started? Like I tell people all the time, don't tell me Muhammad Ali ain't the greatest because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't start boxing. 
So I'm going to say, oh, I'm better at No, I mean, even if I thought I was, I'm not going to tell you that. He the reason I started. If it wasn't him, I would never discover who I came. I would never know what God had gave me. So he the reason I found what I was. <laughs> I can't tell you I'm better than him. Without him, I might not even be boxing. Well, what do you think? I mean, I've asked you about, um, you know, the, the, the way the boxing has changed as a sport with all the, like, you know, new things in it, novelties, freak fights, and whatever. What do you think about hip-hop music and rap music? Because honestly, I cannot listen to the new ones. It's changed a lot, too. It's changed so much that because now, don't get it wrong, there are some good artists now, too, but it's more watered down now. It's like you can do things that you couldn't do back then and you can be famous. It's just like, just like, with, just like with everything else, social media, you know, you can become famous overnight by doing nothing. Now you get a song that everybody likes, it can be the stupidest song in the world. Exactly. Like you lost the, li the, the lyrics, right? Lost the po poetics. There's a few that have, but not many. You don't need that no more. Because now, like, if you got a lot of lyrics, people won't listen to it. They want a more simple and more, the more simple and dumb fire you can make, the better you're going to do with it. Because true lyricists are not appreciated no more. Just like with boxing, true boxers are not appreciated no more. But you got a guy that can do a little bit of everything, and make guys, two years, they'll top of the world. Boxing, you never, you never hardly gonna find a, was going to find a guy to rise in two years, unless he went to the Olympics. Nowadays, we, we live in a microwave society. So if they like it and they like it, let's go. It don't take much. So to me, it has changed a lot. And like I have a hard time because it's hard for me to listen to it unless you're making sense out here you got talent. Now, don't get it wrong. Like I said, some of these guys got talent. You know, it's like some of these young guys got talent. But on a, on a, for the most part, you don't have to be that talented to make it no more. All you got to do is figure out how to be liked on social media and you're gone. What, what, what I'm struggling to, you know, to cope with is that I don't understand what they're saying. It's as simple as that. It's often like, yeah. you know, in the previous times, you listen to Tupac or, or Jay-Z, mm -hmm. you can hear every word. You can hear, like, everything, every single sense that they're trying to put into this. Like, right now, it's just like, blah, 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 blah. Right. I, keep, I keep fighting with my wife all that because I put on Tupac. She's like, you're too old-fashioned. I'm yeah, like, exactly. but I understand what he's exactly. rapping about. Because, because for us, we're into more being motivated by music. The famous why I, I like to make music that motivates people. The music they make now, they're not really trying to motivate you. You know what I mean? They're just trying to make sure the young kids can do the same thing they're doing. And the young kids understand it. We don't, because we we out of that age. We out of that group where we want to go fast and understand. No, we want to hear you tell us something that makes sense, that we can relate to. You understand me? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, what goes around comes around. We want to hear something like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm a survivor, whatever. We want to hear stuff that we can relate to. We don't want to hear just you jib jabbing to make stuff match and call it a song. That what does, which one of us is gonna do that? So your new album will be old school. Oh, it'll be old school for yes. sure. Of course, I don't do new school. Okay, I'm buying it now. My new album will be old school as it come. So 2020. 2020. Yeah. Think about it. one of my songs said, "Cause Roy gon' ball, cause Roy got bread. Cause Roy keep at least six of them up in the bed. Roy do it big, cause Roy got it made." Ain't nothing changed, nah, I be on the same thing. I'm just laid back, low key, I'm trying to maintain. I don't smoke dope, I don't drink, I don't gay bang. I just let the money pile, a couple thousand when I train. Tell them that I'm still sponsored by Jordan, still sponsored by Rival. I ain't bragging, I'm just telling you, I'm gonna eat regardless, taking trips. Out in Russia, had to stop down in New Orleans picking up. It's some bullet car right now, he be the hardest, he be rapping what I'm rapping. Ain't no hair stepping when it come to whipping ass, I'm giving lessons. If you don't believe me, try me, we can set it up. Tell Anderson Silver to stop ducking me and set it up and stop playing. It's real, it's old school, bro, trust me. Yeah, I like. <laughs> Consider this official <laughs> advertisement of the new album. It's right? old school, you better believe Roy, it. Thank you so much, appreciate thank it. You, that bro. was great appreciate stuff. It. Thank you, man. And I look forward to your album. Yeah. Ну что, друзья, надеюсь, вам понравился блог про турниры, интервью с потрясающим Роем Джонсом-младшим. Я погнал дальше, собственно говоря, на Туманный Альбион. Подписывайтесь, шерьте, лайкайте, общайтесь со мной в комментариях, всегда вам отвечу. Обнимашки и пока, до скорых встреч.